Oh, hi. Uh, let me need some caffeine. Hi there. Um, let me see. Looks like I'm. It looks like I am live. Hold on. Um, oops. Didn't have all my windows up and running. Let me. Let's... Hi, Laurie. I'm. Uh... Uh, sorry. It's. Uh... <clears throat> been a week um let me see uh, okay all right cool um so i um so another eclipse is done uh i had a long drive back home and uh, i had a lot of time to kind of reflect on things and so i wanted to have just kind of a quick live stream well, I don't know how quick it'll be, but um, to kind of go over the things that went right and things that went wrong uh, during the eclipse. Um, and so, yeah. And if you're watching this live, uh, how was how was it for you? Um, and where were you? And if you're watching it after the fact, leave a comment. And uh, and if you're watching this, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, um, I'll just start talking about my experience. Uh, and then, um, oh, hey, hold on. I, I need to, I'm, <clears throat> I disassembled. Hi there, Tom, uh, from Maine. Um, so funny that should uh, you mentioned that, um, or that you're from Maine, because, uh, okay. I want an eclipse shirt. You know, so so this this uh, eclipse shirt I have, which has like uh, a number of cities on it, kind of hedging my bets. Uh, my mom actually got this on uh, Amazon, and. Uh, I have, yeah, so I ended up getting it on Amazon. I went looking locally where I ended up um, for, uh, for a local t-shirt. I may, I may look online, uh, but um, so, so kind of along those lot level lines. Okay. I could see it with the glasses. That's great. Um, Cause yeah, northwest Texas, or northeast Texas had better weather than a lot of uh, a lot of other um, other places. And Tom was, as it turns out, a mile from where I ended up. Uh, so that wasn't originally the plan. Um, I had kind of talked about this a few times leading up to the eclipse that the thing I was most, that the biggest unknown was the weather. And unfortunately it ended up worse than a lot of people had hoped <laughs> uh, because Texas had the best odds from a climate point of view. Um, but of course, weather's not climate. So in the f 10 days leading up to the eclipse, it, it was not looking great for um for texas in general and i had plans of doing a live stream the friday immediately before the eclipse but once things kind of and i'd been kind of posting stuff and and once it became clear that things weren't going to be great in texas um yeah that's um once it became clear that things weren't going to be good in texas on the whole i wanted to try to because I had to drive anyway, because I wasn't near, I was still going to have to go like two, 300 miles to get to the center line at minimum. And in 2017, we were far from the center line. So we ended up going over a thousand miles. 
So I guess going into it, I had kind of that expectation I was going to have to drive a bit. But what happened was, as the uncertainty about the, the forecast um, leading up to the eclipse, or, or the uncertainty that there would be anything visible in Texas, I went ahead and got in the car that Friday and drove to Memphis because it looked like Illinois, there was a possibility Illinois might have been okay. And I figured, worst comes to worst, I get to Memphis, or best case, I get to Memphis, things are okay, I could either head back to Texas, or I could just hang out in that area if things changed. But they didn't, and it seemed um, it seemed a bit... Uh, it seemed a bit kind of... Uh, there was too much uncertainty. And I guess... Since, again, since I had to drive anyway, uh, I had been looking and the other, the other patch that looked like it would be great um, was the area that going into it had the worst odds, and that was New England. So Vermont and Maine, upstate New York. And initially it looked like also New York would be good, uh, but then that kept shifting and so over that, I had been looking online, and um, and Maine looked like it was very promising, and specifically Holton, Maine, which is as far, it's not as far east as you can go in Maine, technically, but it's, it's of, of parts that are, uh, anyway, it's one of the farthest places you can go in Maine. And basically, I ended up getting a hotel room in Manchester, New Hampshire. And I thought, if Vermont was okay, I would head that direction. Otherwise, I'd head to Maine. Anyway, long story short, I ended up in Holton, Maine, about 200 feet from the Canadian border at the uh, Holton uh, airport. Uh, because it was an open area. It was, it's like a... a general aviation kind of airport and so there they had a lot of space um and uh and uh wait sorry um i'm trying to uh again i as part of getting ready for the eclipse i ended up disassembling all of my gear so larry was had uh, mostly clear skies in southern Illinois. So theoretically, I could have stayed put in Memphis, but it, it there was too much uncertainty, and so it was again. It was it's kind of the sunk cost. I had already gotten on the road, and I could have either stayed put, and then if things didn't turn out, I would have been kind of stuck. I wouldn't have been able to get somewhere clear quickly enough. Um, and so and so anyway, I ended up heading to to New England and we ended up in Maine and uh yeah it was it was amazing it was phenomenal um so we we got to Maine and because I wasn't there's there's always a lot of there there's are, when there's things these kind of events there's a lot of uncertainty and, and unknowns and I didn't know how busy the roads would be in Maine and it was, there was an interstate going up there, but I was just concerned that if there were people in kind of the, the cities along the way, um, like Portland from Manchester, from New Hampshire, that, that, you know, if they got on the road early to head to Holton, that the trap, there would be traffic. So I ended up leaving, uh, Manchester at three thirty in the morning, uh, the day of the eclipse. And, uh, at some point, I'm gonna. I, I need to put all that footage together in a video. Um, but but anyway, so we um, so, so we got an early start, and we had seen that there was that they would have spaces for people to in Holton to like set up their telescopes, and then there was like a shuttle bus, and it was it was very nice. It seemed very well managed, uh, and. We, but I, they started at nine in the morning and it was, it was like a five hour drive from where we were. So we, we got there right at nine, 
people were starting to show up. So we kind of scoped out things. I went into the visitor center. They said, you know, the airport might be a good location. And so that's where we ended up. And, uh, um, yeah, as it turns out, we didn't go to Canada. We were planning on it. We saw the border. We saw the, uh, like you kind of come up to the, as you're, going down to the airport, the airport road literally goes along the border, like a hundred feet in. Um, and up at the interstate, there's the, uh, the interstate ends at going into Canada and you could see the line of cars. It wasn't a big line. It's not like the border in Texas. Uh, but we were so tired after it was over. I mean, we had gotten up at three something in the morning. And so we were just like, you know, we don't, if it takes an hour or whatever to get across and back, it's like, we're, we're just exhausted. And there were no hotels available nearby. So we had to drive back down to Portland, which is like four hours back, which took, well, maybe not four hours, but it took over four hours because there actually was a lot of traffic heading back south. Uh, people coming up from Massachusetts. I saw some Pennsylvania plates, uh, a lot of people in Maine who had headed up there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, 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 it's always, it's always an unknown. And uh, I was thinking about that of, of the eclipses I've been to three of them, I've had a car and I ended up actually all three of them, the weather ended up being, um, where I had hoped to see it. The weather wasn't great. Um, so like Wyoming, I had wanted to just go to um, Missouri because it was closer. It was still a drive, but I didn't want to have to go all the way to Wyoming. And, and it was raining in Missouri. This time I was like, oh, it's right near us. And there's good odds of weather. It tends to be drier out west, like Kerrville, west of San Antonio. But cloudy. And I, we, I was looking at stuff that morning and people were talking about um, they had their telescopes outside and they were getting stuff through the clouds. Um, and then they were having to pack it up cause it was starting to rain. Um, like Austin area. I, I don't know if it ended up raining, but, and I'd seen some notes about like possible tornado, uh, warnings in some areas. And I'm like, wow. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so we ended up, like I say, it was, I, I think it was just, it was kind of the sunk cost. I'd already spent so much effort thinking about this and, uh, um, we had to get on the road anyway, that it's kind of like, you know, you don't, if you're already driving like hundreds of miles or, or more, like, why not just go, you know, it, it, it doesn't, you don't always have the luxury of, of being able to drive to the eclipse. Um, and so, so as part of that, because it, it, it changed from being, you know, oh, it'll be like a day trip to like, this could be a journey to, to do this. Um, they, uh, uh, Lori, uh, yeah, I, not everybody who was going to go with us ended up going, uh, like my wife did not go, uh, but the kids went. So it was, it was the four of us and they were, they were very good sports about the whole thing. Um, it was a lot of time in the car, but they, they were able to, to nap. So that was good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, this was to give you an idea of how, so we left on Friday, um, the 5th, April 5th, we just got back Thursday, uh, after midnight, technically Friday morning, like yesterday morning. Um, because it ended up being like a 4,500 mile round trip, more or less. Um, so I am genuinely a bit tired. Let me take a sip of this. Yeah. It was a lot of time in a car and like yesterday I was kind of getting your land legs almost like trying to get used to not being in a car. Um, oh, wow. So I, I had seen this stuff about the tornado. So you actually were able to see a little bit of the eclipse but then you ended up losing power later that day. Wow. Yeah. See, I mean, I guess it was, for me, it was, it was like too risky. Uh, um, 
I don't want to say too risky. I could have done it, but it was one of those things where I'm maybe a little too motivated to go actually to, to go as far as far as I needed to go. And and because the weather kept shifting a little just a little bit, um, like originally it looked like upstate New York would be great and Vermont would be great. And then upstate New York suddenly didn't look so good. Like it looked like Niagara Falls would be good and then it wasn't. And then part like Burlington, Vermont looked like it was going to have high clouds and stuff. And I'm like, but Maine looked good. But as in my head, I'm like, what happens if, if it's not good in Maine? Like, I guess we're going to go to New Brunswick um, in Canada. Um, and that morning when we got to the site at, to the airport, there were high clouds there, um, just very high clouds. And it was, it wasn't, it wouldn't have prevented us from seeing the eclipse, but, and it was just a couple of them, but it was windy. It was very windy there. And I was looking at the satellite map and it looked like it was all going to blow through pretty quickly. And sure enough by, so the eclipse was at totality was like at 3 p.m. I think there. And so it started, was it 3 p.m.? After 3 p.m. Anyway, uh, by like 10 or 11 in the, 10 something in the morning, the clouds were gone and it was completely clear sky for the rest of the time. It was actually kind of interesting. I, I'm kind of stream of consciousness thinking about this. When we left Houston, it was completely clear and it felt like we were just following the clear weather all the way up there because there were a couple times where we got up in the morning and there were clouds, but then once we got on the road, we were back in clear weather. So it's like we had clear weather going all the way up to Maine, except for like a few, a little bit like in overnight. So we were, it felt like we were just following the front, <laughs> like migratory, just follow uh, eclipse chasers, following the, uh, the clear weather all the way to Maine. But it, it, it was great. Now, the one thing we did, give up in return for that is totality was almost a minute less than it was than it would have been here but it was still like a minute longer than 2017 so it was a trade-off I mean it was a trade-off I would 100% make in return for pristine skies it, it was it was a it was a great <sighs> um yeah maybe <laughs> um I mean they the kids enjoyed it. They really enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, my to two oldest uh, were there in 2017 and they, um, so they knew what they were in for. And so they were like, yeah. Um, and my son, my youngest hadn't, uh, wasn't there and he stayed back in 2017, but he wanted to go and he, he really enjoyed it. Um, uh, and so, yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, there were a number of places. And then one, I was watching some of the weather, uh, or not the weather, I was watching a few uh, live streams that morning because uh, it had started further south before it, anything had started up in Maine. So I was kind of, I had all my gear set up and I was just, sit, you know, kind of looking online. And I saw some, you know, so I saw the clouds and I saw some areas where it just seemed like haze, um, and that's like, I've had that before, like where we were in Wyoming, we had kind of high clouds, high haze, and it, it, it was good. Um, I guess it was just the weather was, there was some uncertainty on, on like what kind of clouds it would be. Cause I, I was, I was thinking if it was just high clouds, I don't that like, that's, you can work around that. You can see, still see the eclipse, but if it's like mid-level or low-level clouds, then you're not going to see it. So that's why I just kept, I didn't want to risk it at that point. Um, I was committed. <laughs> um, I should be committed, but I was committed. Um, but yeah, so I, I, um, so that was kind of my, um, my thought processes. And, and there was no point on the trip where I was like, should I really be driving this far? I mean, I'm, I've kind of drive a lot. I, I always, we've done long road trips in the past. Um, so yeah, the 360 video, it, it, it worked really well. Um, I'm going to get into some of the specifics because like I wanted to start off with kind of where did I end up with, where did I end up and how, like, how did I end up there? 
Uh, but I, I do want to kind of get into like the highs and lows of the eclipse um, or, or my personal preparations. Um, yeah, the, the 360 was amazing. So, so that was the thing that was interesting. Um, yeah, you could, you could easily see with the naked eye Venus and Jupiter. And maybe it was the clear skies and maybe it was the latitude because we were, we were further north and the eclipse was a little later in the day up in Maine. So the sun was like a decent amount lower than it would have been in Texas. Um, you know, it's, it's that extra, it's like 15 degrees further north and 45 minutes later uh, or something like that. Um, but there was something about that eclipse that was really interesting because as it started getting to the last few minutes of the partial phase, you know, you're kind of looking up, not directly at the sun, except through the glasses, but the sky was starting to dark and the, 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 like Venus just kind of popped into existence. Like I saw it just kind of suddenly become visible. Like it was so strange. Um, cause the sky is dimming that quickly. And so, um, yeah, they were clearly visible. Now, I, I need to remember to, to go over that, but one of my plans, if I had been in Texas, I had, I had this idea of I wanted to take a very wide field photo because Jupiter and, and um, Venus were clearly visible, but I actually thought the framing would work where I could actually get Saturn and Mars in a photo. Um, and Mercury, but the problem, and I could have gotten Mercury, but the problem was Saturn and Mars in Maine were basically at the horizon. And there was a little bit, it wasn't, it was mildly hilly. And so that would have, um, it wouldn't have been visible there. So I had kind of, I had figured that out like the day before using, um, using astronomy. Uh, I, I should do a video on that, but, um, kind of uh, planetarium software, Stellarium. And I kind of p plugged in, okay, if I'm in Holton, Maine, what is the sky going to look like there? Um, and it was right at the horizon. I'm like, I'm not even going to bother with this. Uh, but, but Venus and Jupiter were, were really visible. And if you go back after this and look at that 360 video, uh, look at kind of the, uh, kind of go up to the sun and you'll see to the upper left, more up than left, uh, you'll see a little, you'll see a, you'll see a star that's Jupiter. And then to the lower right, you'll see a brighter one and it's Venus. It's kind of noisy, the image, but you can see it in that footage. Um, and it was like very clearly visible to the naked eye. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My kids, um, let me make this bigger. Yeah, my kids, um, uh, the daughters and, and son. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that um, maybe at the end. But uh, I, they are very eager to see more eclipses. Let's put it that way, like on the spot. Like we were, we were already talking about it um, before the partial phases were over. Um, yeah, and and I haven't I haven't been kind of as extreme as some eclipse chasers. Uh, like I've seen the two in the U.S. I saw one in Mexico. I saw one in Europe. Um, but I'll get to that later. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, and that and I guess that was another reason why I kind of decided to push on to Maine. Uh, or be, because that was the area where it would be clear. I wanted to maximize my chance of seeing those kind of things. Um, cause I remember in 2017 with the high clouds there, I think I didn't notice. I don't know if I remember even noticing Venus, um, because it was kind of in some high clouds, but it showed up in the, in the photos afterwards. So this time, because there was no obstructions, it, it was very, I mean, people were, 
you could hear people on the audio talking about like, look at the star. Um, cause it was, it was very vivid. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the, the, the lighting is, is very unreal. There was a video, um, maybe I'll put it in the description. There's this uh, software, Solar Eclipse Timer, that runs on your uh, iPhone. And it kind of, you, it knows where you are, what time it is, and it'll tell you like certain points. It'll warn you about certain points during the eclipse, like it's about to be totality, so totality is about to be over, so don't like stare at the sun. Um, but the guy has a few YouTube videos and he talks about the lighting because the way it, it's a different kind of lighting in an eclipse. It's, it's not quite like sunset because I mean, you have the, the, the kind of the sunset effect and you can see it in that 360 video where it's, it looks like, like sunset 360 degrees around. But the sun itself is high in the sky, and so it doesn't have that, that kind of reddening effect as at, when the sun's near sunset. And, but it's dimmer. It's, like, much dimmer. And because of the way our vision works, anyway, the guy goes into it. It, it changes the light. Like, it cha our, our perception of the light is kind of not used to that. And so the lighting takes on a very strange kind of blue gray characteristic. Um, and then plus you have the, the sunset effect adding that kind of yellow undertone. Um, but the lighting is, is, it's fascinating. It's, it's very, um, it's really neat. It's really neat. Um, I, I didn't notice the wind shifting. I did notice it seemed like the, the winds did die down. I didn't notice it had gotten cold, colder. It actually, I mean, if you saw the 360 video or the live stream, there was, they'd had a major snow uh, fall in up there uh, a few days before. And so when we, there was tons of snow on the ground still. Well, I mean, for me in Texas, it was tons of snow. And, um, and so that uh, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't cold. I mean, it was in the fifties, I think, or up towards 60, but it got colder during the eclipse. And so, yeah, it, and the winds shifted. Um, yeah, I think, I think I did like time. I, I mean, I saw them like they were looking and, and, uh, like I had a pair of binoculars and my oldest was looking through them at one point. So I, it was, it was pretty obvious. Like there was no missing it. And yeah, the 360 degree, degree twilight is, it's very strange. It's a very unique effect. I, I remember the first time, um, or I, I remember telling, telling the family about that the first time we went and saw an eclipse, uh, that, that it's, it's a very strange effect. Um, yeah, like, because the sun is, is like a thin crescent. The shadows are weird. The lighting's weird. It's 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 a really neat uh, thing. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's uh, one of my one of my uh, children there. Yes. Oh, I did point them out. Okay, good. Okay, good. I it was all chaotic, and I was I was so busy with my own gear that uh, that they were. Yeah. But I, I think I did, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, anyway, so, um, I think I'm going to take another sip of, uh, of, uh, drink. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you're watching this, um, before I get into like kind of the next thing I was going to go over, which was kind of like what went right and what went wrong. If you haven't subscribed, sub like and subscribe. And, uh, and now on to the rest of it. Um, so in 2017, so what went right and what went wrong? I don't really consider the having to drive a couple thousand miles. I guess that kind of 
I expect the weather to be kind of unpredictable, so I had that in my mind. I would not have guessed two weeks ahead of time I would have ended up in Maine. Um, I'm glad I went. I would have done it a hundred percent of the time, ten out of ten times, if if given the same um, uh, the same uh, situation again. Um, so, what went right and what went wrong? In 2017, I had one main camera. I had a secondary camera, um, but I had one main camera with with a telephoto lens, and and it, I had a tracking mount, and I had an issue with the tracking mount, and I realized it during the partial phases, uh, just before totality, and so I ended up hand holding it, and the footage was grainy not grainy, but it was a challenge because I was having to scramble at the last minute uh, to try to salvage some photos. And they ended up okay. But this time I wanted to avoid that. And I, I also wanted to try out some new things. And that might have been probably my biggest downfall, uh, trying to do too many new things um, during an eclipse. Now, I had practiced, as I advised others to do, um, but the problem is, like, things come up and it's still not 100% the same. Um, so, first thing, I had decided I was going to live stream it. And that had some technical issues. Um, I'll do a separate video on that probably on, I have like another channel. I'll probably do that because it's a bit off topic for this, this channel. Um, but there was a lot of prep that I went into, uh, that I went through to, to get ready to do that. And I wasn't sure what kind of connectivity I would have. Uh, and this was like, I wasn't sure if I was going to be in Maine, but there's areas there in, in Texas kind of, out past San Antonio where there's, there's definitely cellular holes. And, and plus you might end up in a rural area with, you know, like at the edge of like outside of 5G. So I, I was trying to um, kind of plan for that. Um, and since I was doing a live stream that required that I have video. Um, and so I kind of went back and forth on, on what I was going to do. And I made a fairly late change, which I don't advise doing that, that um, basically less than a month out, I, I had my telephoto lens and that was going to be my photography rig. And I was just going to do some wide angle footage, but then I, I decided I wanted to do something tighter into the sun. And so less than a month out, I decided I was going to use basically the camera I use here for, for filming this, and I use it for other things too, I decided I was going to use this camera with a telescope. And I, I practiced with, and I had a filter for it and it was all, it was all good. Um, I was kind of inspired by this, uh, this Australian photographer who has produced, I'll, I'll include a link. He's done some amazing eclipse photography and he's done time lapses, like environmental time lapses, uh, like from 2017. Uh, but he also did some really uh, interesting video uh, back in from an eclipse that was last year in Australia. And that kind of was my inspiration that I was like, you know, and I kind of so I started kind of changing direction from just kind of an overall environmental photo to like I wanted a, a, a telescope based photo so that was that was one new thing the next new thing was my photo rig in 2017 I had that problem with the mount so this year I this time I decided I was going to do things differently and I had a sun tracking mount and I in October during the partial eclipse I had um, intervalometer and that worked great so of course I decided not to use it. Uh, I decided because I had this video rig 
I wanted to try to automate it even more, uh, the, the photo rig. And so I decided I was going to do computer controlled. And that's why I didn't mention, I think I had alluded to this, that I'm not going to mention what I'm doing on the stream because I wouldn't want people to like try to reproduce what I was doing. Um, cause I, it was like a last minute change too. And I was definitely not an authority on it. So I didn't feel like, uh, advising other people to try it. And so realistically I knew the time would go by quickly. So I wanted to automate as much as possible. I figured the video rig would probably require the more care because the mount wasn't track. Like it isn't an auto tracking mount. It tracks, but that requires good alignment. I knew my alignment wouldn't be great. Um, and I also wanted to kind of change the exposure during the eclipse anyway. So, so the photography rig was kind of like, I was trying something new. I brought the sea star along, which I talk about a lot. Um, as I figured it was fire, it would be fire and forget. And it was, it was, it was great. I originally had planned to try to remove the filter at totality, but I didn't. And because I was like conflicted about it. And, and since I knew I would have some footage from totality from the main video camera, I figured I'd just skip it. And thank two uh, generous subscribers sent me over the last day, uh, their footage from their sea stars. And they were both in Holton, Maine, as it was, um, as it turns out, they were, they were like a mile. Well, Tom is one of them. And, uh, uh, I got footage from them and I plan, I'm going to, I'll post a video, but I'll, I'll credit them. Um, but I'm planning on putting the whole time lapse together of, of all the footage I got from my sea star with their totality footage. And I'll, I'll be posting that either tonight or, or tomorrow. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, because it, it, the footage was, was great. I mean, especially given how little, um, how little effort it took. Like it, uh, uh, someone told me that they thought it would be like, it, it's like the perfect eclipse telescope because basically you point it, you just turn it on and say, go to the sun and it just tracks it. And you start doing a time lapse and it just records. So the other thing I did, which wasn't completely new and I wasn't particularly bothered by it, was this the 360 camera. And I knew I'd get some good footage from that. And I think my daughter started that recording. Um, and it's kind of like the th kind of thing you just start recording and leave it alone. Uh, we had it kind of sitting there and I kind of stuffed it in a pot in a in some snow uh and the video the video is out there uh, if you want to look at that that's kind of a neat uh it gives a good kind of environmental uh uh experience of what it was like there and then of course i took footage with my cell phone so let me let me go look let me go look at the chat here okay sorry um so i'm gonna pause at that I don't know if I put this on there. After seeing totality, I'm going to become an eclipse ch chaser, but I'm probably going to have to wait until 2045. Um, yeah, I'll get to that towards the end. Uh, but yeah, I, I understand. I mean, I haven't I haven't gone to like the super remote areas for the eclipse, but um, but it can be kind of hard. Um, yeah. Yeah. The eclipse was overblown. You couldn't see the moon. Yeah, I mean, the lighting is so challenging. And some of the the, the really great photos, all, probably almost all the ones you see where somebody has like photos that are just amazing, they're, they're composites. Sometimes they're from multiple cameras. Like they'll have four or five different cameras going, some zoomed in, some wide field, and they'll kind of combine it in Photoshop to produce the final image where you can kind of see the Corona and you can see stars and, and stuff. So that's generally not done in, uh, um, in one shot. One thing I did find interesting, um, this, this goes along with things that went right. The video, I was looking at still frames from the video from my main video camera, this one. And I saw like, there was a double star, like a fifth magnitude double star, which is pretty faint to like the naked eye. It showed up on the video 
like I was, uh, I'll get in more into that, but um, yeah, so my daughter, my oldest daughter, uh, she actually assembled the solar filter. It was a, so I had bought a solar filter for my photography rig, but then uh, I had gotten this other one where they didn't have the right size. So I ended up just getting kind of the Bader uh, sheet film and she, I was running out of time and she very helpfully assembled that for, for me. So, um, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. okay. Um, okay. So, um, so yeah, so I had all these different cameras. I had four or five different, five different video and photography setups. Um, but then another thing that I, I had kind of been thinking about more is I wanted to avoid what has happened to me in previous eclipses where I spent so much time on the gear or looking through viewfinders, I didn't spend as much time looking at it with my own eye. Now, they always advise, or most people advise like, look at it with your eyes, especially your first one. But I, I haven't always spent enough time with that. So I actually brought a pair of unfiltered binoculars along. Uh, I made sure to have it like ready, all ready to go like immediately before the eclipse or before totality. And so I spent a little bit of time like actually enjoying <laughs> Uh, it directly by like, you know, taking in everything and kind of actually looking at it through, through binoculars. Um, now I, you know, cause I was, I was kind of babysitting the, the video camera and it has a, a screen on the back. Um, I, I had been watching that. So I also got kind of a nice magnified view. So as far as the whole, okay. Oh. Oh, so, well, that, so it actually cleared, it actually cleared for totality for you. Well, that's, that's good. That's great, actually. Um, but see, that was one of my biggest concerns. If I ended up staying in an area with clouds or, or where even with broken clouds, all it takes is a single cloud going over the over the sun right at totality to kind of ruin the whole moment. And so I guess at that point, that's, that was another kind of motivating factor of I'm just going to keep going until I can be assured that I won't have any clouds. If I can, it, there were moments where it wasn't clear that there would be any place that would be um, completely cloud free. Um, so as far as like what went right and what went wrong. So, I described everything that I had going. The biggest success, I think, the biggest thing that went right was all of the video gear. The Sea Star was great. It required just like minutes of of setup, if that, you know. Uh, the main video camera was was great, and the 360 camera, the Sea Star and the 360 camera. The, the bang for the buck was like off the charts. Like it required no, almost no setup and the, uh, and no monitoring. And yet the, the footage was, was great. The main video rig required more, uh, more focus, but the result is great. I'm going to be, I need to do some more of it editing of, of the video, but I, it, I was quite satisfied with the result and I'll, I'll be public posting that in the next day or two, um, after the sea star footage. Now the biggest failure I had, and again, I think this goes back to me trying to do too much, trying to do too much and too much, too many new things. What it was the photo rig. It was, it was, it worked great. I got it going, but it only takes a moment of like 
not paying attention or, or forgetting something. And we were all sleep deprived, so that didn't help matters. But I forgot to take the solar filter off at totality. So those photos that the, the computer was taking, completely dark. Now, and I, I, <laughs> I edited that out of the um, 360 video, but literally seconds after totality ended, I noticed it. I'm like looking at it. I'm like, I didn't take the solar filter off that camera. I'm like, those images are all garbage now. I mean, the partial phases were great, but total phases, not, not. And I was, I was, I don't want to say I was, I initially I, had, I made a note that I was, I was despondent about it. I was so bummed about it. And then I went back, um, I hadn't actually, I'd seen the f video on the back of the cinema camera or cinema, the, the, the video camera. And I hadn't really, but it's a small screen. It's not that great. So I went back to the live chat cause I'd completely like, it was just going and someone, some people had commented, they're like, oh my gosh, I can see the prominence and stuff. And so at that point I knew I had gotten good enough video and it was going out. Like if you saw it on the live stream, then it meant it must have been good because I was also recording it locally in camera. So that made up for the fact that the photo rig was a complete failure. <laughs> um, and, and, and I wasn't completely happy with the photo rig, honestly, because the software, I'm not going to name names about the software, but there's a few pro uh, there's a few programs out there that'll drive cameras. And I know people have good results with them, but it comes with some trade-offs. And I, I think I'm going to rethink things next time. Um, uh, yeah, hold on. Um, I'm going back. Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting. Um, and and you can see it. I'll, I'll you'll definitely be able to see it in the C star footage and 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 my my other camera, my video camera. But the prominences, like there were some prominences at the beginning, um, but then the moon kind of moves up, and there was a very big bright prominence on on the edge at, towards the end of totality, and I think some people thought it was over like the diamond ring, but it wasn't, it was a really bright orange reddish prominence. Like you could see it like with your eye. It was, it was amazing. It was, it was incredibly bright. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, it, with, with binoculars, it was, it was really, it was really spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I wish I had spent more time on with binoculars. Um, I mean, my goal was to actually, I've seen this from some other people where they, that who've done a lot more eclipses where they have it automated to the point where they've got like six cameras going at once and they're hundred percent automated computer controlled. And to be fair, the, the one guy, he said, he still was like nervously watching his equipment, um, even though it was doing everything. And I think that would probably be me, but I think I'd still be able to relax a little bit and spend a little bit more time. Um, so did I put a filter on all four to five cameras? I, well, that includes my cell phone and 360, but the C-Star had a filter. It came, it comes with a filter. And I had um, two filters. I had a filter on the, on the main video camera and I had a filter on the main photo camera. And I initially was going to use uh, the same filter I used in 2017 and in 2023 uh, which fits well over my, my camera lens, but I ended up swapping out the, 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 uh, filters. I had, it changed the exposure just a little bit cause it's a, it was a, it didn't block as much light, the new filter, but I got, I had a lot of people had recommended the Bader filters It's B A A D E R. And I, so I had those on the, on the two main, you know, uh, main ones. Uh, but the sea star filter is actually really, it, it's, it's one of the best filters I have, honestly. Um, uh, yeah. 
I, I was worried that would happen to me about forgetting my binoculars. And so like the partial faces had just begun and I literally was unpacking it. And I was like, I need to hold this in my hand. I swear. Cause like, otherwise I'm going to forget. I have it in the heat of the moment of totality. That was definitely a real concern of mine that I had brought it intentionally, but then in the, in the moment you kind of forget, um, you know, that's happened to me in previous eclipses. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was, that was exactly what I was afraid of happening to me, which is why I, I made a point of like, I think I had them and then I may have given them to my daughter, like, hold these please. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the, the sea star for me, it kind of was drifting towards the end of the partial phases. Uh, now, since I had, and I had seen it in someone else's footage, the, 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 the footage I had gotten from others of their sea stars. And it does look like once the filter came off, it reacquired the sun, but mine, it kind of ended up cause it was, the filter was on the whole, all of totality. It drifted. And when the partial phases ended, it was kind of almost completely out of frame and then it quickly recentered, um, but but all all told, I um, that's good. Like you you got the most important part, which is totality. Yeah, and that was another thing. I I ran into issues with. I, I noticed that the uh, the exposures were kind of towards the end of the partial faces. It was it was having a hard time. Um, yeah, and yeah, maybe next time we'll we'll uh, we'll do. Uh, We'll do complete dry runs of, uh, of everything. Okay. Where, where in Vermont were you? Um, Fig Newton. I'm, I'm behind on the comments. The good thing is the kids were, um, the kids were, uh, they were fine. They were on their own. Um, I mean, I had gotten solar glasses for all of them. I also had gotten these little collapsible uh, light magnification binoculars, like disposable binoculars that Celestron, they were selling and then they sold out. I picked up a, enough for all of us. It's just like two X magnification, but it just gets you a little bit closer to the sun. And so uh, all my kids had those. Um, so they were able to uh, see it. Um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a ju juggling act. I mean, I had my, um, I had a, uh, what do you call it? A, a hoodie with big pockets. And so I was trying to remember to put everything I needed in those pockets. So when I needed to like quickly put a filter back on, I'd just have it there. Um, but that was, I mean, just, and that wasn't even from, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the good thing is, um, yeah, you had to block the scope. Uh, yeah, because like once the sun becomes visible, it doesn't immediately fry the sensor, but you don't want to wait too long before you put the filter back on. Because, um, yeah, it's I, I when I was doing some of my testing, I actually did that kind of thing where I wanted to test to see if I could take the filter off and put it back on without jostling the telescope too much. And I did that because you can't do it during the day without frying the sensor. So I, I kind of stood in front of it, took the filter off, put it back on and then, you know, got out of the way to see if it was still pointed at the sun. Um, yeah. I mean, that that's happened to me in previous eclipses where um, I didn't, in the heat of the moment, I didn't notice all the things at the time until I was going back through the, through the photos, um, either prominences or like, like in 2017, I, I had taken photos where Regulus was in, the, which is a bright star was in the frame. And I didn't realize that until after, um, yeah, the, the three to four minutes is, is very quick. It, it's, it's way too quick. Um, 
Although it's interesting, in some ways, maybe it was because I had a lot of stuff automated and I wasn't, I was just keeping an eye on that one telescope, on that one telescope and camera. I feel like in some ways it went by more slowly for me uh, compared to some previous eclipses. So I actually felt like I had say I was able to savor it a little bit more. Um, but it's still, it's still way too fast. It's like just over three minutes. Well, that's great. You used set and see. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's windows only. Uh, but I, I had watched some other people, uh, talking about that with their, uh, setups. And, um, I, I think, I think I'm going to autom try automating again. Th this might be a topic for another day, but I do plan on automating more, but I think, I think I'm going to do something different. I'll, I'll, I need to do some more research. Um, because I saw someone in one of the comments on one of the videos saying that they actually were going to use Nina to automate their Eclipse stuff, which I hadn't ever really thought about that. But you can do anything with Nina, really. And so I need to think about that some more. But um, I think I want to try. I want to try automating it more. But I've, I've got some ideas in my head. One of the things, since I had a lot of time to think as I was driving back, um, I was like dictating into my phone, you know, just notes, like just brain dumb, kind of a debrief of the whole thing of like things I want to do differently next time. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had the binoculars. I, I didn't want to hog the binoculars. Um, and really I didn't have time to hog the binoculars. I guess I looked at them, I saw what I wanted to see, I, I savored the, the seconds, <laughs> and then I handed it off so um, so you guys could, could look at it. Um, the Yeah, you know, and it's interesting. Um, it's interesting because the moon, this eclipse... There was something different about it. It wasn't just the lighting. It wasn't just the clear sky, I don't think. I think it's because the sun was a little lower in the sky. And so you could kind of, you're not looking up just at the sun. You're kind of getting in some of the horizon. And kind of like how the moon looks like it's big when it gets near the horizon. Um, like a full moon get, it seems bigger. Um, I wonder if that was some of the effect. Because it, to me, I mean, I haven't seen as many as some people, but this is like, my this was my fourth eclipse and um a few partials uh, and it seemed different to me like a lot of things like the lighting and, and a few other things seemed different but this was also the clearest eclipse i've ever seen uh, so um and as far as well, i'm gonna put that back on as far as the um the pink i don't know um i mean in some of the photos like it'll seem pink because of light bleed from the um from the prominences or it might be like the at the very beginning or very end you get the chromosphere i think which is kind of a redder layer of the sun and so, so you might get some light spill from that but i i hadn't noticed pink i'll have to go look through that um yeah okay okay you had it on um oh, every second yeah i did i did once a second mine tracked well um but but it kind of and part of that might be i maybe i i hadn't leveled it much the other issue we had in maine uh, i say we because there's others on the stream um it was windy it was very windy i actually had a ton of shake on my c star like very much so. Uh, and I ended up putting like, trying to concoct like a windbreak to try to uh, minimize it, but it's it still, it was, it was shaking a lot. And maybe that contributed, contributed to the tracking not going well. Um, 
yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's easy to, uh, um, okay. So you were in Newport. Yeah. Yeah. See, that was the thing. I saw that Burlington was going to be, was iffy. And, uh, I had debated since I was in Manchester, I had debated going up to Newport possibly. And there was someone in, I'd seen some people talking about Richford, but that was closer to Burlington. And so I was concerned, like, it seemed like that area was right in the transition between completely clear and some clouds. And so it was just, since it was kind of, it involved driving either way, I figured I just kind of, Maine was showing 0% cloud. So I was like, I'm just going to Maine. Um, yeah. Yeah. At, at least it was unimportant things. Yeah. And I didn't in practice. Yeah. The, the problem is I forgot something I had practiced, which was the photo rig and removing the filter. I think it was because I was so focused on trying to not jostle the live stream camera. Uh, when I took the filter off that I just, and then I was, I was so captivated uh, by the, what I saw on the screen that it just completely slipped my mind. Um, but, but that said, the, the video stills, because the, this camera was shooting 4K video, but like not, not log, but like raw video, um, my hope was the, the photos coming, the video coming off of it, I could get good still frames out of it. And, uh, and I, I, so far I have been able to, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, yeah, video. Um, yeah. And, and see that the Eclipse timer was helpful to me, except I was focused on one camera and completely forgot the other one. So, um, but yeah, normal thinking is definitely discombobulated. Like it's, it's just, it, it's an interesting thing because you have this build up over weeks, uh, months, or even years. And then like it comes down to it and some things just like you forget. Um, I want to see that. I want to see the drone footage. Leave a, if, if you, if you put it online somewhere, I'd like to see that. That would be amazing. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, uh, familiar. I, I've, I may have flown a drone once or twice, but I, I didn't want to add yet another thing. I had thought about it, but I, I immediately was like, I'd, I'm no expert. I don't want to add another new thing, but I've seen some drone footage from previous eclipse from 2017. Uh, if, if you have that somewhere, I'd like to see that. Um, cause that, uh, that would be spectacular, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring two different chats and one of them's behind. So great. Yeah, please. I, I, I would really love to see that. I'm sure a lot of people would love to see that. Um, so speaking of eclipses, oh, the one other thing I, I just kind of wanted, this was kind of like a stream of consciousness debrief, but also like talking about our, talking about my experiences and also everybody else's experience. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard, but, but one thing I, I do like being like, you hear it on the 360 video and you'll really hear it on, on the other camera I had going, um, once I post that video, but I like being kind of the, the other thing I liked about, about not the C, the C star is just video only, but about the other camera, this camera is you capture the the, the sounds of the moment. And when you're around other people, it's like you hear people applauding and yelling and, and like saying, Oh my God. <laughs> and, and it's, 
I, th I feel like for me, that's always been kind of, that's part of the experience uh, is kind of the collective, everybody kind of people slightly losing their minds <laughs> at the, uh, at, at what they're seeing. Uh, Cause you have it in your head. And even if you've seen one before, it's still not, it's still amazing. And if you've never seen one before, it's, there's something about it where people just really, um, but yeah, I know at like totality, at least where I was at the airport, uh, like it was so chaotic at the beginning. Everybody's like, you know, applaud, you know, but then there was, it seemed like it was quiet for a few minutes where people were kind of enjoying it, looking at it through binoculars, just t trying to take it in. And then as it was getting towards the end, people are like starting to get excited again. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. Um, yeah, I definitely want to see the, uh, oh yeah. So it was interesting. Thanks for mentioning this B. We were at, so we were at the airport and like I say, it's not like a huge airport. It's kind of like a general aviation. Uh, there were some private jet there was like a private jet that landed there um i was too focused on the gear but uh b noticed my daughter that um that a plane like there was no there were no takeoffs and landings during totality but a plane had landed like just not too far before total uh or just before the partial phases and like they got out of the plane I guess watched it, maybe had some telescopes and then, and then got back on and flew out. Like they had just flown up to Holton to like, I don't know if they were in, maybe they were down in Massachusetts or something and flew up. But I was like, wow, that's, that's impressive. Save all that time driving. You just kind of fly in, see the eclipse and fly out. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I do think, um, I mean, it was a longer eclipse and the weather was better uh, and the lighting was better. Like there was, it was just something different about this one. Um, uh, what else? Um, oh yeah. So getting, speaking of uh, eclipses and future eclipses, um, like the eclipse hadn't even ended. The total phases had ended, but it was still partial. And uh, I, I need to upload that, but um, we we were already talking about, like, what next? You know, like, the problem is, I, I've warned people about this. When you see a solar eclipse, a, a total eclipse, you, you want to see it again. Um, and so I uh, I was immediately thinking about, I wasn't immediately, I've been thinking about this anyway, Um but in uh, uh, there's no solar eclipses next year, or no total eclipses. But in 2026, 2027, and 2028, there are three. And the one in 2026 is kind of interesting because it goes over, it goes along the edge of Iceland and ends like in Spain. Um, 2027 goes so. So the eclipse would have been four and a half minutes in Texas. It was like three and a half minutes in Maine of, of totality. The one in 2017 was like two and a half minutes. This one in 2026 is like two and a half minutes. But 2027 is almost six and a half minutes, which is the longest eclipse that there's going to be for the next hundred years, maybe. I don't know. I don't think there's any other eclipse this century that's going to be this long. Um, it goes kind of right over like the southern tip of Spain, Straits of Gibraltar, and then into like Egypt. Um, so that's kind of an interesting one. And then 2028, right across Australia, including Sydney. So if you, if you uh, want to go to Sydney, Australia over the next four years, now's, now's the time to start thinking about uh, um, four years from now. And it's also going over New Zealand. Uh, but that could be an interesting one. But 
I was uh, already kind of thinking about, um, again, I haven't done like the adventure eclipse uh, stuff like some people, um, but but those those three, one of those three, or maybe all three, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by all three of them. Um, and then there's another one in uh, there's another one in 2030, which seems like a scary number, but it's only six years away. Another one that'll go over Australia. Um, see right there goes right over Australia, and that'll be longer like longer than this one was in Maine. So almost like three minutes, 44 seconds. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, and I, I think I'm going to do a, a video where I kind of discuss that because I, I want to do some research into these a little bit more and, uh, and see what some of the options are, uh, for, for, uh, for that. Um, yeah, let me see. Uh, yeah, yeah. So eclipse mania, it's a, it, the, the struggle is real. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch, Lori. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm kind of intrigued, intrigued by, uh, by these upcoming ones. Um, like some of them, I mean, the Australia one seems doable. Granted, it's a long flight, uh, but you have, you have four years to get ready. <laughs> um, yeah. And that one is going to be a pretty long one. I mean, that would, that one's going to be longer than the one was here. Um, even if you had been, even if it, you'd been in Mexico, it was, it was like four and a half minutes at most. And this one's going to be over five minutes in Australia. So that's definitely one of the longer eclipses. So if, if you, if you've got a taste of, uh, of the eclipses, uh, or if you've got a, if you've gotten total solar eclipse fever, um, there's, there's a few coming up that might be, uh, they're they're in areas where there are actually people. It's not like over the ice sheet of you know Antarctica. Like there is one coming up in the next few years that's that goes over Antarctica, um, but that one's kind of a, that might be a little bit too much. Um, at least for me, it will be. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So like we drove, we did the uh, great great American very quick car trip across the U S but, uh, but yeah, that could be interesting drive driving through Australia. Um, hopefully not have anything poisonous bite you. Uh, yeah. So, so Saros, um, the Saros cycles. So eclipses repeat every 18. It's because of the alignment and the, the pattern and, and uh, the cycles of, of the moon's orbit and Earth's um, orbit and the, the sun, basically eclipses repeat every 18 years ago, every 18 years. And like they've known about this for a long time, like the ancient, the Greeks may have figured out or they figured out some aspects of it, of course. But um, uh, so... So eclipses repeat every 18 years. So ones in the same cycle tend to be um, similar. So uh, what, let me look at this. Let me go, since I have the page up, let me go look at this one for 2027. If you look at it, it says it's Saros 136. Saros 136 produced a, a, quite a few or recently it's produced like recent decades, it's produced some of the longest eclipses uh, that have been in the last, you know, in recent decades or even maybe even centuries. And so as luck would have it, the first eclipse I ever saw was a Saros 136 eclipse. Um, it was, 
because yeah if you look at this the one that was in 1919 was almost seven minutes then 37 55 they were all over seven minutes 73 the first eclipse i ever saw was this one in 1991 and it was that Saros, and it was almost seven minutes long which is insane um it was amazing uh but you notice the one in 2027 is part of the same Saros cycle and the cycles are uh it's it's like 18 years and like a th and a certain number of days and and like 11 days and a third of a day because so it they end up like about a third of the way around the earth shifted so the one in 91 was over um like it went over hawaii and like uh mexico but the one in 2009 was over um it, you know it went over china and it was kind of like uh, the the pacific the west pacific but then the one in 2027 again a third rotated it'll be over africa and and you know the mediterranean and so it kind of shifts each cycle and this is actually the one speaking of 2045 that's the one that's going to be going over the u.s in 2045 so this one is going to be over a six minute eclipse and the great thing about this one is it goes from west to east unlike this one this year which went kind of you know northeast so this this is similar to the 2017 path in that it goes through a lot of western u.s which should have good chances of being clear um so the 2045 eclipse is part of the same sero cycle but um it's a little shorter than the one in 2027 uh so if you go to the one in egypt <laughs> it's uh it's going to be a few seconds longer um and you don't it's in three years instead of in uh 21 years um but that's that's the sero cycle basically um they produce very similar eclipses and so if it's a short eclipse ones in adjacent sero cycles tend to i mean subsequent ones from the same sero cycle all, tend to be short as well um the one in 2027 is from a particularly long series of eclipses so that one will be long um, um yeah but the uh yeah yeah and it there's there's always a path along that line of totality where the maximum eclipse happens so in texas it would have been like for under four and a half minutes the the peak location was like in uh mexico but up in maine it was like three and a half minutes um the the eclipse in 2027 that goes through the Straits of Gibraltar, Northern Africa, through uh, through Egypt, the peak eclipse is actually near Luxor. Like, um, so that could be an interesting um, if you've ever wanted to go to Egypt. Although I have a feeling it's going to be expensive because people will know that there's an eclipse going to be that's going to be there. So, uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting, but. Uh, I have a feeling there'll be a lot of people going to Luxor um, to do some sightseeing and see the eclipse. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably do a standalone video just about kind of once I've had time to kind of drill down into some more of the details for those 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 upcoming three eclipses. Actually, I'll probably do the four eclipses, including the second Australia one in 2030, because it it's disconcerting to me. Uh, I don't know if it's disconcerting to other people that 2030 seems like it should be far away, but it's only six years away. Like that's not that far away. Um, and so four possible eclipses, uh, they all re will require flying if you live in the U S but, um, some of it seems doable, especially if you're, if you're able to kind of plan it ahead a few years. Um, or if you have points, save up those points. Um, uh, but oh yeah, that was that was the other thing. When we were when we were going back to kind of uh, 
my strategy of going where we ended up. All the hotels on the path of totality were were booked up. But if you just went right off, like 50 or 100 miles away from the path of totality, you, there was plenty of availability, which is why we ended up in Memphis. Um, it may have been more than 100 miles, but it wasn't so far that you couldn't drive there. And I had noticed looking at a map of, um, of New England, Manchester, I could get hotels, but you just went a little bit into New Hampshire, everything's booked out, basically along the path of totality. Um, so that was another thing where you can get hotels away from the path of totality. And if you do it right, you, and if you're lucky, you can get it close enough where you can still drive there before the eclipse. Um, but that was kind of how we ended up in some of those places. It was basically wherever I could get a hotel that was close enough and that kind of paralleled the path more or less that I could drive it uh, without worrying about eclipse related traffic. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of it. Um, I think, I think that's all I've got right now. Um, unless anybody has any other comments or experiences they want to share. Let me take a sip. But I'll, I'll be posting a couple more videos. Um, one of the Sea Star, hope I, I might do it tonight. And I'll do one of the, uh, from my main camera. I might also do it tonight or I'll do it tomorrow. Um, but I, I should get that out, th those out there relatively quickly. Um, and if you haven't seen the 360 degree, um, if you haven't seen the 360 degree uh, video, you should definitely check that out after the live stream. Yeah, so that was the thing. So we were in Holton and I, I, I noticed that there was a room, there was a room available in Caribou, Maine, which was on the eclipse path as well. That night, the night of, uh, after the eclipse, um, and they wanted $700. It was for a Hampton Inn. It's normally like a hundred dollar hotel and they wanted 700. And there were a couple other, like a couple others like that, which is why we ended up driving all the way down to Portland, Maine, like three, four hours because stuff was either unavailable or, or very expensive. Um, so yeah, that was, that's another thing. Like they know, they know it's uh and, and, we had run across a story of, of like this travel group, this travel agency that had booked some rooms in Buffalo, New York, because that was on the center line. And the hotel canceled them like a month before the eclipse. And so they had to scramble for like a hundred rooms to find something. Um, I mean, they'd signed a contract with a hotel and everything and it got canceled. So yeah, that's, that would be my concern of, of some of those deals, uh, some of those tour deals, but anyway, future me problem. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. I, I, uh, I, I, I had a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with the eclipse and, uh, I like sharing, uh, it and I hope people were enjoyed the eclipse if and uh are eager to see more because i know i know we are um we've uh unfortunately or for better or worse once once you get it the bug you you kind of you, you you feel like you need to see more because there's something very very unique about the experience um it's just unfortunate it wasn't more clear across more of the u.s it's very unfortunate, but at least it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Like a lot of people saw it through high clouds. So at least there's that instead of it just being a complete washout. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's, that's all I've got today. Um, again, like, and subscribe if you're watching this after the fact, or if you're watching it now. Um, and I think, 
I think I'm going to leave it at that. So hope you all have a good afternoon and uh, keep an eye for the new videos uh, that I'll be uploading of uh, more footage from the eclipse once I've had a chance to edit it. <laughs> um, I've already started editing it. I just need to do more. Um, but yeah, thank you. Have a great day. And <laughs> it's a generational mania. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I passed it on. <laughs> All right. Oh. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's actually a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. All right, bye. Uh, have a good, uh, good day. Okay. Great. I'll look for that. Uh, I'm, and I'll, I'll, cause, cause sometimes the links don't work well. I'll, I'll make sure to update like the description on the video so people can find it more easily. Um, but thank you. Thank you all. And Avida Zane. Avida Zane. <laughs> all right.